A very good afternoon to all of you. How are you all? Feeling a little festive, are we? Yes. So I welcome you to this series, 100 Most Expected MHCT English Questions. Today is the part one of this series. I'm sure you've attended the sessions that have happened in this series as part of the series for Quant and LR already. Right? So I welcome you to this series. Welcome you to this session and uh, I hope you'll learn a lot today. We'll talk about different question types that have been asked in MHCT English. We'll practice some questions. We'll see how to approach such questions. Right? So that's the agenda for today. And I think it will be fruitful for you. Why? Because see, I understand that okay, March 17, 18, these are the tentative dates, right? However, uh, you should not think that, oh, I have ample amount of time and therefore, you know, I can take English lightly. So, a common attitude that I have encountered. So, I think that English is one section that requires consistency on your end, okay? And this consistency is what pays off in terms of vocabulary, especially in terms of grammar, especially in the exam. Okay, so start preparing right from now, attend sessions, prepare outside the sessions also, okay, after attending the sessions, learn some vocabulary words, learn grammar concepts, okay, and you will see that when, you know, uh, you, whenever the exam happens, okay, you will find yourself better prepared for it, right, so that's the whole point of this series, let's see who all are here, hi Kajul, good afternoon, hi Viral. Hi Vidip, good noon, good noon Amit, hello Jonti. Yes, these will be helpful for CMAT as well, okay. The preparation is similar, why? Because of the fact that the topics that are asked in English are, are similar in CMAT and MHCT. Just in that sense, the preparation for both the exams is similar, okay. So, very happy Holi to all of you, yes. All of you must be in the Holi mood, yes. So, do play, but play, say, play Holi safely, yes. That's what I would suggest to you. Right. And also keep learning. Don't forget to attend various sessions. Practice vocabulary. Practice grammar. Okay. All right. So let's begin. This is our first question for the day. Right. Five options because MHCT gives you five options. Right. Remember there's no negative marking in the exam. So no negative marking here as well. And I want ample number of responses. Then only I'll reveal the answer. Yes, so tell me what is the synonym of this word moribund? Yes. Good noon, Chetan. Hi, Radhika. You have to give me a synonym. What do you say? Okay, John T says B. All right. Shubham. Hi, Shubham. Quick, quick. This is a 20 second question. Okay, quick highlight says E. Good noon, Shristu. That's it, two responses. Okay, Yogin says B. All right. What about others? C, okay. Five responses I've got. I need at least 30. So, these are not difficult words, are they? If I look at words such as lucid, lively, are they difficult words? And I'm sure if you know obsolete, you can at least guess obsolescent, even if you do not know the exact meaning of obsolescent. Yes. So, if there are five options in an exam, trust me, you can eliminate three of them. Right. How can you eliminate? Let's see. Moribund. Have you noticed this, that words that have more in them, such as morbid, Okay, morgue, moribund here, mortality. Have you noticed this that they are associated with death, 
mortality a morgue is where a dead body is taken to right something that's morbid it it gives you this feeling of death right morbid and moribund they are in fact synonymous in that sense so morbid something that is uh, that makes you feel as if something is about to die right a morbid atmosphere horror movies create that atmosphere moribund to be very specific it means on the verge of death okay so associate words like this so i associated more immediately with death and that gave me an idea that okay if i'm looking for a synonym lively cannot be a synonym lucid which again means something that's very clear cannot be a synonym thriving when you are thriving you're not just uh, you know alive you are flourishing in life that's when you are thriving right so all these three are eliminated right away i am just left with a and c so good those who narrowed down to a and c okay now out of these i have got some c's here three c's all right then i have also got three e's okay thriving cannot be a synonym thriving is an opposite idea the answer here is obsolescent this is a similar idea it is also not an exact substitute of moribund no not at all obsolescent again something that is on the verge scent when we have this ascent or scent no this means turning right so for instance who is an adolescent an adolescent is turning into an adult adult here means adult and ascent here means turning who is senescent a person who is senile yes a person who is senile has lost his or her or has lost many of his or her cognitive abilities due to old age right mental abilities due to old age is called senile senescent is a person who is turning senile okay or turning old to be more precise right it's not used always to mean that somebody is turning senile because senile has this uh, uh, you know negative connotation so senescent is simply someone who is becoming old and the associated side effects of being old come with it right so turning old is senescent so obsolescent adolescent senescent the idea was to tell you that okay you could have associated it like this turning obsolete so something that is turning obsolete is also about to you know go out of fashion or about to die in that sense and that is why c is a synonym here right so you could eliminate three options here after narrowing down to a and c i think the word obsolescent was in fact easier for you to associate with moribund now brusk again you know in fact if you do not know the meaning of brusk just associate it with brisk someone who's brusk is you know abrupt and rude in their manner there are people no who very abruptly just uh, uh, say something that puts you off such people are brusk so abrupt and off handed in manner rude and abrupt so this can be associated with brisk in that sense brisk is also something that's abrupt and fast right and this is what it means so it cannot be the answer all right so please make such associations all right and uh, i think through that through elimination smart elimination you can land at the correct answer and even if let's say out of a and c if you are highly confused then just go with what your heart says right but do mark something okay all right coming to antonym yes the word is dionysian i have discussed it with you in some previous sessions let me see who all remember please read the instructions carefully right when i say antonym please don't give me a synonym this is a common error that students make in synonym antonym questions let's see who answers the fastest i've got b from ritesh others what do we say 
D from Milind, okay. All right, okay. So I've got four responses. What about others? Okay, okay. So it's quite a few Ds I've got. You have to give me the opposite idea. Opposite. Now, through this question, I want to demonstrate grouping and elimination to you, right? So I understand that these are um, not immensely easy questions. No, that's not the case. They are moderate to difficult questions. The previous question also and this one as well. Moderate, I would call the previous one. It was not difficult. And this one could be moderate to difficult for some of you because of words such as Dionysian and Bacchanalian. Right. Now, you could have grouped and eliminated in case you knew the meaning of either Bacchanalian or Dionysian. Right. So, these three are synonymous ideas. A, D and E. Because they are so similar in meaning, they are synonymous. None of them are the answers. Okay, so whoever said D, E, A, they are not the answers. Some of you said B, absolutely correct and I'm really happy, excellent that you said B. Um, Dionysian is associated with, there's a story behind this word. So see, you can learn words in an interesting manner by learning the stories behind them. Greek god of wine, drunken merrymaking partying right they have a god for that as well right so the greek god for wine partying merry making religious ecstasy right that is dionysus dionysus so the word dionysian comes from there so dionysian uh, pleasures or dionysian aspects of life are the sensual uh, you know partying aspects of life so to say right something that's very uh, sensual very spontaneous so that is dionysian bacchanalian is a synonym so bacchus bacchus is the roman god of wine so if you know a bit of uh, history of philosophy you would know that you know philosophy and uh, a lot of religious stories and myths they first developed in greece and then they were translated to the roman language so the romans adopted a lot of those myths so that is why bacchus became the roman god of wine drunken merrymaking partying ecstasy etc right so bacchanalian is a synonym sensual spontaneous again these are similar ideas eliminated diluvial is not at all related to this discussion what is diluvial Yes, it's associated with the word deluge, which means a flood. So, diluvial is associated or related to heavy flooding. That is what diluvial means, related to flooding. So, even this is not the answer. Ascetic. So, see, this is associated with partying and drunken merrymaking. Who is an ascetic? Or what would be the ascetic aspects of our life? Okay, an ascetic as a noun, is a person who has renounced uh, uh, luxury and sensual pleasures. That person is an ascetic. So, sadhu, sant, okay, they are ascetics. And uh, as if you use it as an adjective, the ascetic aspects of our life would be those aspects on which we exercise control, where we exercise moderation, where we don't indulge in ex excesses, right? So, that is the meaning of ascetic and that's why these are answered. So, Please eliminate in synonym antonym questions. If you do not know the exact meaning, that's okay. Okay, just based on your uh, knowledge of the fact that, okay, these appear to be similar ideas. So, group, eliminate, right? Okay, coming to an easier question. This is a fill in the blank question. You just have to fill this one blank. Let me see who answers the fastest. And I want a lot of responses for this one. Let's see.
Okay, XYZ has answered the fastest. Others, what do you say? So, you remember that nursery rhyme, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Yes, Jack fell down and came tumbling down and Jill came after, something like that. So, to fetch a pail of water, pail is the bucket in which you carry water, right? So, the spelling for that pail is P-A-I-L. It is not this pail, it is definitely not pile. So, this was a fill in the blank that was testing your knowledge of commonly confused words, right? Can you distinguish between these two? That is what it was checking. Do you know the difference between a pail and a pile? Pile is just things put on top of each other, right? So, this is a pile. Let's say a pile of clothes, right? A uh, pail, when someone turns pale, what happens? Their color becomes yellowish and usually someone becomes pale out of fear, out of anxiety, right? So, no, not this pale. This is an adjective. This is a noun and even this is a noun, right? So, a water pail container. B Bangalore, good. Most of you have answered this correctly. Okay. Correct spelling. Yes. In fact, this exact word I remember was asked in MHCT. So, who will give me the correct spelling of this word? It's a humorous word, funny word. Let's see. A virtual toffee to the student who answers the fastest. I think Shreya has answered. Or did Kajal answer the fastest? Okay. All right. Others, correct spelling. Spelling questions are 10 second questions, okay? They are not even 20 second questions. Okay, all right. So, do practice difficult spellings. They did appear in your exam last year, right? So, this is just exa an example of one word that did appear, discombobulate, okay? Now, it is often used as an adjective. Discombobulate is a verb. We often use this word as an adjective. Discombobulated. This is the adjective. Okay. So, when somebody is discombobulated, it's a funny way of saying that, oh, this person is all confused. This person doesn't know what to do right now. Right? So, that person is discombobulated. To present that in a caricatural manner, right? To present it in a funny manner, we can use this word. So, the of course, the correct spelling is E here. This Com bobulate. Okay, E is the answer. I think very few of you said E. That's okay. This is not a high frequency word as such, right? You would find it in relatively older novels. So, for instance, if you read PG Wodehouse, if anybody's read PG Wodehouse, you would find the usage of this word there, right? So, the answer is E here. So, do practice such questions. Now, coming to our next question. This is a fill in the blank based on idioms. Let's see what you say. Okay, C, all right. I've got D also. What else? C, okay, bricks without straw. Hmm. 
okay all right all right c okay so see again my effort is to bring relatively trickier questions to you right so uh, this is an idiom question and you need to know the meanings of all of these in order to be able to attempt it right so uh, something that will serve you in the future as well the answer is a straw man arguments so in logic see while arguing with each other when i say arguing i don't mean that we are fighting with each other let's say we are arguing on a topic you have one point of view i have the opposite point of view so a debate is happening a civilized debate right so i present my argument which is my viewpoint backed by reasons you present your argument which is your argue, your viewpoint backed by reasons now sometimes what happens is that the reasoning that we indulge in may be flawed okay we may indulge in flawed reasoning so now uh, logic has actually categorized these this you know flawed reasoning giving such flawed reasons as fallacies logical fallacies that is what we call them that this is fallacious reasoning this is a logical fallacy one type of logical fallacy is this that we look at our opponent's argument we turn it into extreme right we turn it into an extreme argument and then we say something that opposes that extreme so for instance let's say uh you and your neighbor are arguing on something there is a debate happening on a topic so your neighbor says that you know the thefts around us have increased a lot i think all all the houses should have a cctv camera okay outside their house so you know you tell your neighbor uh so do you mean that you don't trust your neighbors what have you done you have taken your neighbor's argument to the extreme the neighbor never said that he or she does not trust the neighbors he or she just talked about installing cameras right you just took it to the extreme that this person is suspicious even of his or her neighbors so you get the idea that this is what we call a straw man argument this is a logical fallacy where you take something take your opponent's argument turn it into extreme and then oppose that extreme thing so because that is a type of argument straw man this is the only word that fits here no other terms actually fit here no other idiom fits here last straw what is a last straw so if i say you know my cousin's betrayal acted as the last straw so let's say i entrusted my cousin with a secret and she revealed it to my parents okay so my cousin's betrayal acted as the last straw anyway i did not like that cousin anyway we had some problems between us so when she did this this was the last bit of annoyance last bit of betrayal that i could tolerate from her so when something minor happens okay it could be a minor annoyance but because it comes on top of other annoyances other such things that have been happening other problems it be, the situation becomes unbearable that is what we call the last straw right what is bricks without straw yes last correct bricks without straw so making bricks without straw that's how we use it you know he is making bricks without straw when someone is doing something let's say completing a project without the appropriate resources that is when we say that this person is making bricks without straw so straws are used as raw materials in making bricks right so if you are doing something if you're making bricks without straw you don't have the appropriate raw materials the resources so for instance if let's say you are working on a project in your company but you've not been given enough money to execute that project okay so in that case you're making bricks without straw straw in the wind yes straw in the wind so if something is a straw in the wind it indicates that some it indicates a future uh, you know outcome it indicates what is going to happen in the future so if i say that let's say one company closes right because of losses and i say you know the closure of this company is actually a straw in the wind of the coming recession it's an indicator of a larger trend it's an indicator of the coming recession so that is a straw in the wind something that indicates the general direction of something 
राइट ओके टू गेट द शॉर्ट स्ट्रॉ इफ यू गेट द शॉर्ट स्ट्रॉ इमेजिन यू वॉन्ट टू ड्रिंक समथिंग ओके देर इज अज ग्लास इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू एंड लेट्स ऑल ऑफ यूर शेयरिंग दैट ड्रिंक Okay, it's a bucket of sorts. You're sharing that drink, and you are the one who gets the short straw. Then you get allocated the meaning. The literal meaning of this is you get allocated the worst duty. When you are given the worst task out of a series of tasks, or you are given the worst duty, that is when you get the short straw. Right? Happens at times, especially especially when you're the youngest sibling. You're always given the worst duty in the house in case some duties are allocated. so that is when you get the short straw theek hai sabko samajh mein aa gaya everybody is clear with this straw man last straw making bricks without straw something that is a straw in the wind is an indicator of a larger trend and to get the short straw chal chalo theek hai chalte hain milin i just wanted to cement these ideas because idioms can especially when they are similar they can be confusing jaldi se batao ye easy question one word substitution the last straw that broke the camel's back absolutely phoenix correct correct so if your camel was already overburdened and you placed one straw even though it's so minor a thing it will break its back okay okay all right okay d okay a lot of d's i have got okay one b from shreya from one from jonty others okay so mostly i see a b versus d in the chat box yes i also see a couple of c's but if he speaks less can he be garrulous this is not an antonym question you just have to substitute something okay speaks less you have to substitute something for this idea a word that conveys this idea of speaking less so reticent okay so you are saying uh, b and d are similar confused who is a reticent person this person is shy reticent means shy you know when you are diffident you are hesitant to uh reveal your feelings to others so it's a general nature of a person it's not primarily concerned with speaking only but terse is a word that is concerned primarily with speaking if you are terse or if you give terse replies that means you give very short replies you are very succinct in your words you don't like to speak a lot so the answer therefore is not reticent it is terse Right, that's why this was a confusing question. So I hope this is now clear. Garrulous is someone who talks a lot. Garrulous is an adjective. Somebody who is talkative. Okay. Sullen simply means someone who is sulky. Terse people are perceived to be sullen by people because they give short replies. Prate. It's a verb. When you prate. you talk unnecessarily and at length you know you talk talk nonsensically and at length that is when you prate theek hai a parrot prates okay so you are saying reticent is someone who speaks less it is as i said it's a general nature so because of that yes a person may speak less that is how it may manifest but it's concerned with shyness rather than just speaking right that's why b is a more appropriate answer here all right now wait there is con this context also here na ek minute you have to look at the context as well this is his first press conference with the media he is anxious because he speaks less he is anxious because he is terse he is anxious because he is reticent hmm still terse can fit theek hai b b will still be the answer even when i look at the context even then uh, b will still be the answer he is anxious because he does not uh, speak a lot so that's why he thinks that he may be perceived as someone who is let's say sullen or some somebody like that 
okay coming to this one analogy malapropism malapropism that's how it is announced uh, pronounced and malaprop was the name of a character mrs malaprop in a particular play so the word comes from her name tell me what the answer should be here quickly Okay, A, D, all right. Let's see what the others say. So, of course, you have to give me a similar relationship. So, first figure out the relationship between the question pair. B, E, A, all right. So, this is what I've got. I've also got a D. Just a C remains. Okay, I've got I've got a C also now. So everything. So mal. Mal means bad, right? A malpractice, malnutrition, malapropism. So uh, the character malaprop, why she was named malaprop was she used the incorrect word when some other word was required, and this produced a humorous effect. This produced a humorous effect. So, for instance, if let's say someone is uh, very successful and I'm introducing this person and I say she is at the pineapple of her success. I meant to say that she is at the pinnacle of her success, but instead I say she is at the pineapple of her success. So, this is a malapropism using a similar sounding but incorrect word in place of another which produces a humorous effect, right? That is called a malapropism and of course it has to do with incorrect use of words. So just like malapropism is a mistake associated with words, similarly anachronism means something that is out of time, okay? Something that is outdated. So, for instance, if today I start teaching you wearing Victorian clothes, okay, or wearing the clothes of the Rajas and the Maharajas as they used to wear in the ancient times, my clothes would be, would be anachronistic, right? So, just like malapropism is a mistake related to words, anachronism is an outdated mistake of sorts related to time, something that appears to be misplaced. Okay. Now, ellipsis. What is ellipsis? An elliptical sentence. Ellipsis is a feature of a sentence. Some sentences are called elliptical sentences. For instance, when you ask me, how are you? And I say, fine. This is an elliptical sentence. I mean to say, I am fine. But instead of repeating this, I am, I just say fine. Instead of saying this, I am, I just say fine because this I am is understood. So this is called an elliptical sentence. It's incomplete, but it's still complete because you understand it from the context, what I mean to say. Right? So, it's a feature of a sentence. Okay. Ellipses are also these three dots. These three dots are also called ellipses. When let's say I want to say more but I stop. So, that's when I put these three dots. A lot of people pepper their WhatsApp conversations with these three dots. That is also ellipses. Anyway, this is not a mistake. So, eliminated. Zinjanthropus is actually... Just like, you know, we have uh, sapiens, we have neanderthals, okay, in uh, uh, types of human beings. Similarly, some early type of human beings, they were called Zinjanthropus, right? So, it is not related to uh, apes in the sense that this was a mistake, eliminated. Pun is not associated with sarcasm always, right? Also, pun is not in the sense, again, it's not a mistake related to it, uh, to it nothing out of place about it. So, ye bhi out of place nahi hota. Coming to catechism. Yes. What is a catechism? A set of religious instructions 
that are used to teach religion to people they are called that is collectively called a catechism a set of religious instructions all right conspicuously old fashioned correct with it for the anachronistic example yes absolutely harsha i would recommend them because we'll be doing vocabulary grammar a bit of logic in the sense of para jumble sentence jumbles all of that is there in mhct as well uh in yes in uh, cmat as well that's what i meant similar term that refers to something that is out of proper chronological order correct correct is the answer chalo good that everybody has got it i hope that you'll remember the other words also catechism right you'll understand malapro you'll now use malapropism as a word right let's move to another question type that i've seen in your previous year papers word usage so one word is given to you it is used in four sentences here there could be more in the exam and you have to tell me in which sentences it has been used correctly okay so quickly tell me okay xyz we can plan something around it there are easy questions also abhiram see i have deliberately kept the level a little higher for now as we come nearer the exam in the last 4 5 days i'll give you the exact same level as cet right now the level is a little higher so that you prepare for something more difficult such that when the easy things come in the exam they appear even easier that's the idea so yes some of the questions that i have done with you they are on the difficult side i stated this in the beginning itself okay a c d all right what else so d is currently ruling in the chat box you have to give me the correct usage okay all right others come on so i'm waiting for one correct answer so far i don't think i've got the correct answer okay phoenix says b right so b is the correct answer here let's see why bar has a number of meanings first bar is simply let's say a metal a, straw, a rod of metal is also called a bar of metal right then your piece of chocolate is called a chocolate bar so bar is simply an elongated piece of something that's the usual most common meaning however bar can also be used as a verb to bar someone is to prohibit someone to disallow someone so if i bar someone from the exam that means i don't allow them to sit in the exam right so because of his age he was barred from he was prohibited from entering the theater this is an absolutely correct sentence so either this or this okay all are not correct i'll i'll show you why he barred his soul to the preacher that means he prohibited prohibited his soul to the preacher this is incorrect in terms of meaning in terms of grammar he bared his soul you bare your soul okay when you lay your soul bare or when you bare your soul as a verb you just reveal everything about it to the preacher right so you bear, bearing your soul in front of someone is telling them what has been bothering you telling them all your secrets so this is incorrect and that's why eliminated now the bar barred all bards this is a tricky sentence i agree uh the bar here yes what is the bar in case you've seen some um series law related legal series then the law aspirants have to pass the bar there so the bar is an examination right it's actually a body the legal body of various places it's uh, referred to as the bar colloquially right so for instance the icai is called the institute colloquially by a lot of ca aspirants similarly the bar legal aspirants uh, 
use the body that actually conducts examinations or uh, gives license to lawyers as the bar so the bar what did it do okay the bar barred it prohibited okay all bards now this bard is, it means a poet so shakespeare is sometimes referred to not as this bard as a bard b a r d that's why this was incorrect so the bar barred all bards this means that the law body did not allow poets to take the examination that is the meaning here okay so 3 and 4 are fine and that's why b is going to be the answer okay does it make sense yes b bangalore okay let's look at this question it's again a grammar based question right so that was a combination of vocabulary and grammar word word usage is usually a combination of vocabulary and grammar this is a purely grammatical question we have discussed it in one of the previous sessions let's see who remembers parth it's a tricky terrain actually um to give you an example for instance a word such as salubrious or even better let's let's look at a word limpid now when you hear this word limpid it appears as if somebody is limping isn't it but actually limpid means clear so it's a risky tricky terrain to do that salubrious appears a very scandalous word to me as if there's something negative about it but it's a perfectly positive word it means healthy right so that's why i would not recommend that okay anyway let's see what you say here C is what a lot of you say. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Everybody has answered. I want multiple responses here. Okay, I've got some Ds. One A also. so these are again again this was a 15 20 second question and i understand that your main confusion should be between these two okay um uh, reconciled we usually use this preposition with with the verb reconciled now prepositions is one such area in grammar which sometimes uh, is actually like vocabulary because the use so for instance with reconciled usually we use with when we say reconcile with someone so let's say he reconciled with his spouse okay that means earlier they might have had a fight then they reconciled with each other okay they made they basically solved what resolve whatever differences were there between them so in that sense we use with with reconcile but here this person is not reconciling with someone with whom he or she had some differences or fights let's say okay disputes that's not the idea here it is used in the sense of adapting okay so children should be adapted to the fast pace of change in today's world reconciled to is the correct preposition here not with make sense d del is the answer and not c some of you said a also reconcile for no this is uh, i think this is an incorrect usage out and out could have been rejected easily these are the two close options fine so two now how can you prepare for prepositions i have told you earlier as well uh, practice fill in the blanks based on prepositions you will find them in previous year papers you will find them in non cat papers you will also find them in ren and martin right a lot of them actually so through that you will become better at them now let's have a look at a sentence correction question let's see what you say so now we have come to grammar
eliminate okay d c all right d e b also e also okay so pretty much everything except a quite a few of you say e now okay let's have a look this was the okay i'll tell you what the the concept that is involved here first let's eliminate the wrong options the easy ones that we can eliminate a was simply a repetition of the original underlined phrase right people who do good work to the corporation good work to the corporation okay wherever they are so what does this wherever they are refers refer to yes corporation no right it refers to people so this here is a misplaced modifier. The concept involved here is that of modifiers. It's a misplaced phrase. It should not be placed here. It should be placed near people. Whatever they do should also be placed near people. So, I have spotted some errors right, you know, at the stage when I'm reading the question. Will be assets to the valued corporation or will be valued assets to the corporation. Again, a misplaced modifier here, a misplaced adjective. So, a is eliminated right then uh, now let's let's have a look at c people who whatever good they do to the corporation people who whatever good they do is this grammatically correct this is not grammatically correct people who whatever good they do people who do good work whatever they do that would make sense people who do good work then i i should have placed a dash after it people who do good work whatever they do Kuch bhi hai us good work mein, that makes sense. Okay, eliminated. People who good to the corporation, this does not even have good. So, this was a very easy option to eliminate, option D. There is no do here. Now, people who work good, people who do good work, again eliminated right at this stage. So, D and E, easy options to eliminate. C does not make grammatical sense. In A, I had already identified errors. B is the answer. Now, people who do good work. Now, I am explaining. What do I mean by good work? Okay. Uh, whatever they do. Now, and wherever these people are. Now, it's a commentary on what I have just stated uh, earlier. People who do good work. Check kuch bhi kare, kahi bhi ho. Theke, will be valued assets to the corporation. That's the idea. Make sense to everyone? B, Bangalore is the answer, not E. Any queries, please ask. This is a modifier question. You can get, in fact, you have got such questions uh, wherein you have to replace a phrase. So, what I am doing here is again replacing this phrase itself, replacing this group of words. Okay. We have to replace do as well. Acha, do is missing here. I am so sorry. Just a second. do should have been present here or it should not have been underlined here wait it should not have been underlined here actually okay and going by that people who do good to the corporation wherever they are now this is missing this is incomplete on that rationale on that basis i should have eliminated d okay do should not have been underlined my bad my bad okay still b is the answer right my bad, okay. Beardo, weirdo, phoenix. Do should not have been underlined. Okay. See, even if let's say some of you are thinking that in its absence should, uh, if let's say this mistake happened uh, on my end, then should E be correct? E is still not correct because E unnecessarily creates so much gap between people and the qualities that I'm using to describe those people, right? What, wherever they are, whatever they do, you should always place the description as near as possible to the word that is being described. Okay, so E is not correct. Okay. 
ha sorry my bad there look at this one no errors here you have to give me the correct sentence one sentence has been repeated five times with some of course changes so tell me which is the correct one let's see what you say Let's see who answers the fastest. Beardo Beardo says E. Vidip says T. Akin says E. All right. C. So C versus E in the chat box. Others. E. Okay. So E is winning now. All right. E. Okay. C, okay. C made a comeback for a while. Okay. So, this is a very basic concept. This is an easy question. This is not a tricky question. Each is a pronoun that is always singular. So, I would recommend that you learn the rules related to subject verb agreement. Go through them. Subject verb agreement. This is a this is that kind of question that employs this concept. So each of the girls, no matter if I say girls, each is still singular. The subject here is each. Each living in the orphanage had been ill-treated by her family is correct. Before she was abandoned. So incorrect. Incorrect. Okay. Then this again incorrect. It comes down to C and D. In C and D, the concept used is of tenses, the concept on the basis of which you will distinguish between them. So, before she was abandoned would be correct, no? Two actions happened, one before the other, right? So, the one that happened earlier, the first action, that takes had been, that takes had, right? The second one has the simple past. So, this C is the answer here. Good, those who said C, very happy to see this. This was, these were some... These are some basic concepts, tenses or subject verb agreement. You should know these. Okay, the last question for the day. I want a lot of responses. Okay, enthusiastic responses and ample number of responses. Let's see. Spot the error. Correct with it. A or E, all right. D. C, okay, others. Such few responses. B, okay. C, B, okay. D, all right. Okay, okay. Beardo, Beardo, have you narrowed down to one single option. Vidip says E. Achal says E. Okay. The answer is E. No error. This is a correct sentence. The number of acres that have been destroyed. Here it will be have only because that refers to acres which is plural. So the number of acres that have been destroyed by wildfires has increased. Now this will be has because this Verb here refers to the number. The number as a subject is always singular. 
okay because when i say the number i'm talking about one specific number there let's say 3000 2000 it's one specific number so the number has increased earlier if the number was 2000 now it has increased to 3000 the number has increased dramatically over the past several years so this will be has this will be have because it refers to acres e is the answer no error here any queries in the questions that we have done today please ask okay we have time don't worry about time also in case you or any of your friends are preparing for cat 2023 then this is our comprehensive program there's a batch available in it you can join right you have to enroll now the link is in the description box to make this accessible we also have a scholarship uh, available we actually have multiple scholarships available you can get get up to a 90 percent scholarship right and the test for this is on the 18th march at 7 pm you can take it score well and get up to a 90 percent scholarship then if you are confused about your cat exam taking strategy your preparation strategy then you can attend this workshop on the 7th march at 7 pm right uh, today itself yes at 7 pm also, we have started with this series, you know this, right? So, do join us, do attend the sessions and after the sessions, please do your homework also. So, on your end also, you have to practice, you have to prepare. Okay, in case you are confused how to prepare, I took this session called MHCT Decoded, where I talked about preparation and strategy, everything, right? So, stay connected, welcome guys, I hope you've subscribed to the channel. You can also download our app, there also we conduct quite a few informative sessions. There are a lot of free tests also available here for vocabulary and grammar, they'll help you for your CET. Okay, so I'll see you, bye bye, bye bye, welcome, welcome guys. Yes, Beneath, you absolutely can, in fact, if you are planning to, then you should start right now, okay. I really, uh, so Phoenix, uh, it's a very difficult uh, question that you've asked me because the score varies depending on the difficulty level of the exam. So, for instance, last year also there were wide fluctuations from one slot to the other. So, that's why I refrain from commenting on this. Okay. Uh, just give your best. Okay. Leave the rest to the God. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Okay. For CMAT 2. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome, bye bye. Happy Holi, yes, happy Holi to all of you.